Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome. So, first skunk of 2018, yeah, ah, oh, stunk it up good today. Uh, started off by uh, second guessing myself and not making the run out to the uh, blue water on the Atlantic side. Uh, Noah's reports of two to four footers just kind of scared me off. I didn't feel like getting beat up. Um, I don't think they were. The winds were so far down. I bet you it was really nice out there. But I decided I'll go to the Gulf side, make it an easy day. Uh, stopped off at Geiger Key, picked up a few blue crabs, which is something I've been wanting to do. Love the bait chasing, and it's good to know I can just stop over there, grab some uh, nice permit-sized crabs, and take off. But uh, moved over to the Gulf side, launched, headed all the way out to the actual Gulf, anchored up, and then, of course, wind and tide just made that chum go right up the anchor line, which is one of my big pet peeves. Uh, gave it about a half an hour, no bait, nothing showed up, so I said, screw this. I trolled along the edge of the gulf where the drop off was, nothing. Came back in, drifted a bunch of the big flats just looking for activity. Not that I didn't see permit or bonefish, I didn't see any life at all, nothing. No sharks, no kudas, no rays, just nothing in there. Then I went to, okay, plan C. So I was gonna try to cast net some mullet, drift those around, pick up some sharks, at least some big jacks or something out there. I cruised another five miles of, of uh, all the different island mer uh, edges there. Nothing, no bait, no bird activities, just no signs of life. So by the time I was like frustrated, there's plenty of sun left, but I was like, screw it, I'm, I'm done. I'm just going to call it. <laughs> and then uh, I did stop by one of my um, Barracuda flat spots, and it was loaded up. Unfortunately, because the sun was somewhat down, and then you get that glare at an angle, I couldn't see him until I was right on him and scaring him, but definitely a fun thing to do. So that'll probably be an upcoming uh, video coming up. But uh, so I ended up calling it a day, just packing it up, eating it for my first skunk. Uh, but I will show some clips from the day because I know some of you guys are using my videos to get your dose of uh, vitamin E. So here's some uh, video throughout the day. Hello everybody, so we're over here at my good old uh Hey everybody, so I'm over here at Geiger Key, but I'm in the planning stages of what I'm going to do today uh, Originally I was thinking about going offshore today, but they're predicting like two to four foot Although it doesn't look so bad right now, but once you get out there it can be a bit rocky I didn't feel like getting beat up today so I'm thinking I'm going to do the Gulf run, but I want to do is to take a couple of crabs out there and spend a little bit of time since we got uh, clear blue skies today, sunny, uh, low winds. I might be able to do some sight fishing for maybe like a permit or something on the flats. I did bring a wide variety of stuff, so I got all my different flats and uh, heavy rods in case I want to anchor up on the outlets out there and see if I... The mackerels and the kings and stuff might show up. Uh, I've got some chum. So right now, I'm looking to catch some quick crabs if I can. So I'm over at Geiger, although I'm going to launch on the gold side. So I put my chum bag out there, and I'm just waiting to see if any crabs show up. Uh, a few times when I was bringing fish back and even just dead bait, throwing it out there, but this is right at evening time. I would see these perfect size of crabs coming up. So I'm gonna give this exactly 15 minutes because it's basically 11.45. And then uh, if nothing there, then I'm gonna head out. And the jets. Okay, so we've got one right there. Just a hair too small. 
one a little bit bigger, but he's running, making his way over. Just a hair too small. So hopefully more will be showing up. All right, we've got one there. It's hard because it's rocky here. Try to get the net underneath them. Where does he go? Get into my net. Oh, there's over here. It's gonna be tough. Okay, we were successful there. That right there is a perfect bonefish slash permit crab. So one or two more of those and we'll be good. All right, we got our second one. So this is a nice, a little bit bigger than I would generally use, but that'll work. Put him in there. All right, we'll try for one more then we'll be out of here. All right, here we are out in the back country, just taking the freeway through the flats. So I think I just have to wait a little while for the uh, tide to change. So we'll cruise around a bit and see what we find. All right, I'm at my last chance spot. I'm over here on my uh, Barracuda Flats. I'm putting on this uh, top water lure that I found the other day and I'm going to be throwing top water out here looking for barracudas. This flat I've seen a lot of uh, times they're just sitting there on these flats and just kind of kicking back relaxing. It's kind of shallow so I can't really throw much else so I'm going to use this top water plug and see if we can get some action. I already ran over like three of them so they're around. Just gotta see if I can entice one to bite. If I don't catch anything here, then no video. Because <laughs> I haven't caught, I haven't even fished that much. I've been just driving around, I don't know why, but let's see what we can do. So as you can see, it was a beautiful day out there. One of the best so far this year. Uh, unfortunately, I stunk it up on my side, but oh well, it happens. So in order to not just burn the day, I figure I'd still make a video by including these guys. So I've got these batteries for my Fish Finder GPS. We've got the sealed lead acid or the AGM. And then we've got this one, which is a lithium ion battery pack. So I'll go through these real quick and show you what I got. So a bit of a funny story on how I got this little Chinese lithium battery pack. I uh, went online, did some research, found one with my specs, placed the order on eBay, no problem. Uh, next day, got the confirmation, got the tracking number, all is good. Three or four days down the road, tracking shows that it, it was here. So go out to my mailbox and I get this. Just a little bubble envelope. I'm like, what the F is going on? So I thought, no, nah, maybe it's just some other order. I check it. No, that's it. And this is what I got. Just a little stupid Asian necklace crappy thing. I'm like, oh my gosh, two things could happen. One is that they crossed up their numbers. So I went online, checked their uh, eBay store, and it's an electronic store. They didn't have crap like this. So I knew it was the second one, which is they were basically sending something so that they showed a tracking number in the system to help their uh, stats with eBay. So I sent them an email, did some more research. I was like, screw the list, my I'm gonna stick with my AGPs. So I ordered this one. They both basically showed up, the, well, they finally got back to me and said, no, that was a gift. Uh, your order is coming on this tracking number. So I knew they were just out of stock and they just sent this crap just to hold their place. But they both showed up. I told them I didn't want it since I got this one already. And then uh, we ended up working out a deal. We split the cost, so I got it for half price. I figured that'd be okay, so at least I could kind of try one of these out and make a video out of it. So that's how I got this thing. Okay, let's run through these guys real quick. Basically, my setup, I use a Lawrence Hook 5. Uh, it's a GPS slash fish finder, color screen, five inch. And its basic usage is a, off of a 12 volt and uses about 0.75 amps per hour. So that'll help in regards to capacities of these batteries. 
Now I've got this one, which is the lithium ion battery pack. And this is a standard AGM uh, sealed lead acid battery. They're actually rated equivalent in regards to this one is a uh, nine amp hours and this one is 9,800 uh, mAh. And the capacity should realistically advertised wise be about the same. So this is my back stash of batteries. I basically go through um, one per year, if not a little bit more. Um, these are basically sealed lead acid batteries, uh, meaning that they're basically acid waterproof. You can turn them upside down, mount them upside down, sideways, it doesn't make a difference. They're basically sealed. Um, the difference with these, my old ones were, these are $20 ones. They're just 7.5 amp hour cheapies. And I just kept buying whenever I need it. This one I actually spent a little bit more money. I think I spent right around $30 on it. It's actually a nine amp hour rated. So it supposedly holds more juice. Also, this is considered a supposedly a, um, a deep cycle battery. So it's made to be charged and depleted, charged, depleted where these are really not meant to be done that way. So hopefully it's gonna hold larger capacity and last longer. Next, we've got the lithium battery pack. And basically all this is, is if you took a bunch of rechargeable batteries, strung them in a row to get 12 volts, put on a little bit of a regulator to kind of help manage it, and uh, that would be it. And that's all these are, it's just a bunch of uh, rechargeable batteries inside here. And what it allows you to do is charge it up, plug in your accessory cable and either use it as a power or you can use it to uh, recharge like your cell phone or other accessories. Uh, these come with basically an on off switch and then a, a port for either your device that you're gonna plug into or for the recharger that will charge that battery. Uh, one catch all with these Chinese little models is that you actually have to turn it on, plug it in and then plug it into the wall in order for it to take a charge. If you have the switch off, it won't accept the charge because that controller is set up that way. Uh, a lot of times you'll see these that also have uh, USB ports on them. So you can directly hook into your cell phone or camera, whatever, and charge up that battery. Uh, I specifically look for something like this that was very basic. It just has the on-off switch, the one port for the charging and decharging, and it's got a little uh, LED light there. Based on the fact that I'm concerned with corrosion and uh, salt water intrusion in these things. So I'm actually going to try sealing this up as best as possible, and then uh, hopefully it'll last. You get a drop of uh, salt water on any of these ports, and I think they're just going to get zapped right away. But anyways, that is the lithium uh, battery pack. I paid, um, well, originally I paid $30 for this one and then I ended up paying 15 for it after we had our little dispute. And just for clarification, how I'm gonna adapt this to my fish finder. Basically, I've just got a, um, in my existing one, I've got a clip on for one for the positive, one for the negative, and they just stick on there and then that fits inside my battery box. What I'm gonna do is put those same ends on this generic cable. Uh, I'm just gonna snip off one end and there should be basically just a couple wires in there that I'll just separate, find or figure out which one's positive, which one's negative, and then uh, put one of those same battery terminals on the ends of this and that's how I'll plug it in. So let's wrap things up with a quick pros and cons of each battery. So for the sealed battery, the AGM style, pros, they're cheap. 20 bucks gets you a seven and a half amp hour uh, run all day, um, so that's always good. Uh, another part is they're sealed, okay? So don't have to worry about them dripping acid or anything, uh, which also leads into the fact that they're basically maintenance free, they're waterproof, uh, corrosion proof, basically. I've never had rust on these tabs, which are the only metal exposed. So you really don't have to worry about them at all. I mean, you could not even run them in a case if you don't want to. Cons are they're heavy. Man, you'll feel the weight of these things in your kayak. Two is the short life. Like I said, I get maybe, maybe a year on these batteries before they get depleted so much they're not even useful. What happens, like I was talking about, is because when you drain them all the way too low, 
and then try to charge them up, they don't charge back to the maximum. You lose a little bit each time. The way that you could kind of offset that is to try to reduce the amount of drainage on these batteries. So that means just minimize the use of your fish finder. Uh, turn the lighting down, um, don't use it. Like for me, I can go five or six miles to the wrecks without a fish finder because I can kind of just guesstimate where I'm at. Once I'm out in the blue water, then I turn it on and I just use it for that short time that I'm locating those wrecks and then it's off. Same thing for going to the reef. I'll just use it once I'm out on the reef, turn it on, find a spot, and once I'm on anchor, I turn it off. So that minimizes the amount of drain on it rather than just depleting it until it shuts off because it's dead and that really hurts the batteries. Now in regard to the lithium one, I went ahead and put the little dongles on there. So these are little male ends. So I got the female ends on the kayak that go to the fish finder, those plug and we're good to go. So one of the pros is very light. I mean, maybe a quarter of the way to that, extremely light, uh, long life. Uh, even these little cheap Chinese ones will last quite a long time, up to like 500 charges and dis discharges where you get the good ones, the quality ones, and it'll last a couple thousand. Uh, again, maintenance free as well. There's nothing you have to, you don't have to add water, acid, anything else to them. And if you get the type that has the USB port, you have multiple uses. You could use it to charge your GoPro cameras or your cell phone or any other accessories. Like I talked about earlier, I chose not to have any external ports based on the fact I'm scared of some sort of corrosion. One drop of salt water gets in there and then it'll eat the whole thing. So that's why I was worried about that. Um, cons, they tend to be expensive. This is a cheap Chinese one, but still this is 30 bucks where you can get a seven and a half amp uh, hour one for about 20 bucks. Um, you get a good quality one and then you're into the hundreds. Uh, and then the risk, another con would be uh, corrosion. You have a high risk of corrosion because these aren't meant to be, be, be by water. Just normal home uses, it would probably be fine, but for my usage, I would worry about that. But uh, other than that, those are the pros and cons for each battery, depending on what you want to use them for. Uh, I would recommend going to the AGM, uh, even though they're heavy, but they're just bomb proof. Don't have to worry about them. They'll work plenty fine. If you get a year out of it for 20 bucks, that's worthwhile. Um, if you're going to use that multiple uses, then I would say, yeah, the, give the uh, lithium ones a try. Um, I will be putting these through their test runs. Even just the um, deep cycle new AGM style battery to see if it actually makes a difference versus my $20 um, 7.5 amp hour ones. And then I'll also be using this uh, lithium one just to see what I usage I get out of it. To be honest, what I've been reading is, is that you basically, on these cheap Chinese ones, you basically get about half the advertised rate. So I'm expecting four to five hours and then I'd be happy. But if it lasts two years, three years, then definitely worthwhile. So we'll see. And I'll do another quarterly review of this stuff uh, when we get down the road. Or if it fails right away, then you'll hear about it. Trust me. So anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye.